What's up my YouTube friends? My name is Pi. Welcome to Constructive Critique. This is where we critique your guys' photos and today we are featuring guest critique star Trevor Daly, everybody. <laughs> I like I like star. Can we put that in my in front of my name always? <laughs> Trevor Daly, rock star, photographer. No, seriously though, Trevor Daly, if you guys don't know about him, you should really check out his work. Uh, Trevor, you're based out of Arizona. It's like I'm telling him where he's based out of. I'll tell you guys. Trevor is based out of Arizona, has been shooting wecca weckades, weddings for about a decade. In other words, weckades. Yes. And also, in addition to the incredible work that he creates, he's my best friend. Well, he's one of my best friends. That wasn't what I was going to say. I was going to say he also works for MagMod. He is that fantastic educational instructor that goes around and teaches you guys how to shoot and how to light your images using MagMod products. So you can find him online. And in fact, this is an episode that is MagMod Critique. Yeah, I, I I would say even just lighting critique, but um, but I love it because we pulled some images from the Magmod community. Some of the incredible people over there in the community submitted some photos, and I'm looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah, so guys, the Magmod community is fantastic. Great place to learn. Uh, whether you're using actually Magmod products or not, it's a great place just to learn how images are shot. So be sure to join up. That's where you can find us oftentimes as well. And uh, want to thank all the members that have submitted their images. A quick little note, we're gonna go through 11 images. Trevor, the rating system goes as follows. Okay. We're gonna count it down. We're gonna go like put up a number. It's a, it's a thing that we ripped off from F-stoppers. Lee and Patrick won't mind. Let's, let's be honest, they, they don't care. Uh, yeah, no. They're in Puerto Rico anyways. They're in Puerto Rico, they're not even here. They don't, they're not even gonna see this. Uh, so <laughs> what we're gonna do though is we're gonna put up that number so we have a place to kind of start of where we think an image is at. If an image gets a 10, that means that it is portfolio worthy. This image has nothing to change. It's an award winning image that needs to be submitted everywhere, da, 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 so forth. If it gets a one, that rarely ever happens. Neither does a 10. We've only given out one 10 so far. We haven't given out any ones because we're nice. One is an image that is just not redeemable in any possible way whatsoever. And generally we're not gonna give out too many of those either. A five though is what we consider to be the average for what a professional should do, okay? So that gives you kind of a basis. Five doesn't mean it's bad. It means that it's what we would expect somebody that has experience to do. All right, so we're gonna start from the top and get into this. By the way, a little side note, we had like 40 something submissions to this. We actually had to cut out almost half of them because they weren't submitted with the proper resolution. So guys, we saw amazing images. If you're not seeing your image in here, it was probably because it was nixed. Uh, because it was too small. So be sure to please read the instructions and submit images that are the appropriate size, 2,000 pixels on the long edge. You know, Pi, can I, can I add something really quickly? I would love for you to add something. <laughs> so I got to say, this is going to be, I, and I was telling you this pr prior, that this is going to be tough for me because I, I hate critiquing anyone's work because every photo that I'm sure we're going to look at is, is, is in my mind better than my own work. You know, I think that's the imposter syndrome. We all think we're hacks. Um, at least I do. You probably don't, Pi. I'm definitely a hack. I don't even know why right. I'm doing this critique right now. Uh, <laughs> hey, but but I just want to add this real quick. Uh, about 10 years ago, I sat down with w, at WPPI with Brady Perrier, and he went through my portfolio and just told me how much my photos suck, like one after another <laughs> after another. And every every so often, out of one out of every 10 or so, he'd be like, oh, this, this one's good. This one's okay. This one's a five, right? And I hated it. I like literally, I thought I would never want to talk to Brady again, but then I realized how helpful it was. And so I just, I hope people... Uh, don't look at me and say, man, these guys are so mean. Like, I hope, I hopefully you guys uh, get something out of this. Trevor's going to be very mean to every single one of the people that are submitted their images. That's really what he's saying in short. So no, no, with that, <laughs> look guys, this is constructive critique. And as Trevor said, it's one of the best ways to learn. So be sure to submit your images because Honestly, hearing what other photographers, especially those that have experience like Trevor, have to say about your images is one of the quickest ways you guys can see things that you wouldn't have yourself. So, should we do this, dude? Let's do it. I haven't even looked at these yet, so that's okay. the idea, right? You are the guest star, so here's how this is gonna work. Uh, I'm gonna put up a two minute timer. You talk as long as you'd like, and uh, I, I'm making this up as I go. Uh, and I'm gonna take up the rest of the time. Story of your life. Story of my life, make it up as you go. 
All right, so we have our first image from Adrian Ong of Let's Make a Memory. Adrian, what's up, brother? Long time no see. Hope you all aware. Well, I, I can't even talk right now. Uh, Trevor, we need yes. a number. You got a number okay. in your head? Uh, I think I got it. So, so f just real quick. <laughs> Five <laughs> is like, hey, a professional should be able to create this. Ten is like portfolio worthy. And one award, is... you know, award worthy, you know, okay. world class portfolio, not a single change whatsoever. Okay. Are, are you saying right now that you're just going to give everyone tens? Because if you are. <laughs> okay. You got your number? Here we go. I, I think so. What do I do? Do I need to hold it up? Hold it up. Three, two, one, seven. All right, brother. I can't even see your number. You I did a, a sorry, I did a five. Oh, okay, cool, cool. All right. Two minutes are up. Go. Okay, so so I guess it, being that it's a seven, I guess I'm gonna tell you what I like about it. What I like about the image is is obviously this nice balance of light and flash. Now I do think there's just a touch, a little bit too much flash. Um, in other words, I can tell that a flash was used, and I would have loved if 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 I wasn't able to tell that if it just made a couple pop without that flash. If I'm if I'm making sense of that. In other words, I I know a flash is needed to be able to bring it down, but I wish it was just a little bit lower power, just a tiny bit. Um, I love the leading lines going into the couple. Uh, it, so these I, lines up here. Yeah. I'm going to draw on the image while you're talking. Oh, okay. <laughs> right on. Um, I, there's nothing about the image that I see immediately that I say I would change. I, I guess maybe, uh, it looks a tiny bit off, uh, you know, like, like maybe just a little bit, uh, straightened out. Um, the horizon needs to be leveled a little bit. Yeah. But uh, but otherwise, I feel like it's a solid image, and and I like I said, I like the balance of light and ambient. I just wish it was a little tiny bit more balance. Is all. Um, I I would have even loved to see maybe a little bit of color in the sky if he used like a gel on the couple, bring a little bit more blue or something else in the sky. Um, but otherwise, I think it's a solid image. Nice. All right, I got forty seconds. I agree with everything you're saying. Um, I I honestly don't mind the. Um like, like this shot is really meant to be, it looks like it's shot to be dramatic. So the issue that I have with it though, is that everything from the inside kind of out is all the same brightness. And I would have like pulled a, a vignette in to kind of lead all that attention into them. In addition, for me, the, the light direction is my problem. Like we're not getting the light far enough away from the camera angle. The light was probably placed here and then it was probably removed in post. And what that ends up with is kind of a flat light. So Adrian, I would push the light out just past these bushes and light across so that you get a little more direction to it and you get a little more shape to the bodies and something that looks a little more, that's it, that's it. You get more direction and a little more shape to the bodies. The last thing I was gonna mention is that the composition itself, Adrian, I know you can do better in terms of, I know you're trying to frame them like right inside of this uh, arch and everything and, and it's everything's leading up to them. I just find it to be a little bit boring. It feels like a bullseye, and I think there's something more interesting here to be had. Uh, fix your perspective distortion as well. It's a simple click in Lightroom, and your lines will straighten up on the on the building. Yeah, I agree about that last one. I was going to mention that as well. But you didn't. Hey, when you mentioned two minutes, I thought you meant I had two minutes. I almost took all two minutes from you. No, no, no. We have two minutes per photograph, and you're the guest, man. So you need to you need to talk a lot. You know what I mean? <laughs> you need to talk. All right, so this is from Alan Wolgamit. Um, I'm sure I slaughtered that, and I'm sorry, Alan. Uh, this of lighter focus photography. So thanks, Alan, for the submission. This is a really beautiful image. Um, Trevor, you got a number? I do. I gotta okay. figure out how many fingers I hold up here. Three, two. Oh, look, we both gave it an eight. Woohoo! All right. Okay, brother, you got two minutes are up. Let's go. All right, I go first again, huh? Cool. Um, so I I love. There's a couple things that I really really enjoy about this shot. I love that the the couple is high enough that he got really on really low, and he used that foreground element with the water. Um, I think that's fantastic. I love that blur. I love the the uh, the, the aperture that he chose to really bring that out. Um, I love the light on the couple. The only thing that I I wish is while I love the focus on them. I feel like her legs get really dark really fast. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if that would be something that I would do with light. If I would just add a little, you know, move my light down just to feather it a little bit more or even just go into Lightroom and just touch it up just a tiny bit. But ideally, I would do it with light so I don't have to, you know, do that extra post-processing work. Love the sunset. 
Uh, the only other thing is um, maybe if I would have changed or if he would have changed his angle just a tad bit more to the left, we would have lost that uh, brick wall on the side or whatever that kind of wall is over on the side. Um, yeah. For some reason, my eyes get drawn over there a little bit. Yeah, that's honestly probably my biggest distraction too is that that right side that we just highlighted here. Um, I just feel like it doesn't belong in the shot. There's also like one little tree. Do you see that one little tree that like sticks out on the horizon? <laughs> right, just it's a like, lollipop tree. Yeah, just just nix that little lollipop there. Um, these are like all very nitpicky things, and I, I gave this an eight because I felt like there were so many things that you're doing that are above what a typical photographer would do. For example, Trevor said getting low to the ground, choosing an aperture and a focal length that really emphasize the water leading up to the couple, um, placing them above the horizon line, adding in that kiss of light. I agree 100% that the light is a little bit dark on the legs. But the other thing that I wanted to say was keep shooting this until you get the right pull on the dress. For me, the way that the dress is bunched up around the legs and the way it's kind of floating behind is not flattering. And I would have had her pull it down and kind of get a better flow of that dress. Remove this thing in lighter and make those changes, or sorry, remove that little brick thing and make those changes. And I think you're really close to a portfolio or, or world-class image here. I, you know, can I just add one more thing on that? I, I do love, I want to emphasize that he has her stepping into the the guy, which is fantastic because so often, and I, I tend to make this mistake a lot too, is we have our couples just statically stand there and looking at each other. So he's having that, that motion, that step, um, even if it was just a fake step. Uh, the other thing is I was just going to mention if you move a little bit to the left, now we don't know what is to the left. I mean, there might be another wall over there. It might be a parking lot for all we know. Um, but it would also kick their heads just a little bit more in that clean space, that bright area of the clouds, which I think would have really, you know, done look nice as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to add one tiny thing too. Um, not because I have to have the last word, but I do have to have the last word. Uh, <laughs> but I, I have the HSL saturation tool selected. And one of the things that I do a lot of is I coach my clients in wardrobe. You know, I, I really try and help them to choose the right options for when they arrive at the shoot. Um, one of the things for me that's a little bit distracting is that his shirt is so darn blue um, that it kind of sticks out in the frame. Now, for this image, we can make a simple and easy fix by just kind of pulling the blues down. And that blue is so deep that it's actually not even going to affect the rest of the image that much. So as you see me pulling it out, you're not really affecting much else of the image. But if you find that you are, you can always just brush that instead. With that simple change, you can see how it already tightens up the color tones in the image uh, quite a bit. Hey, Pi, can I, um, <laughs> not that I want the last word, <laughs> story of our friendship though. Um, you know, I take the last word, it's fine. No, no, this actually isn't even about the image. It's about the HSL slider, that, that hue saturation slider, you know where I use that desaturate the blues a lot uh, yeah. is when I'm shooting rings. A lot of times the rings will get a little bit of blue bouncing off the diamond. And if I don't want that blue in there, I'll just take that hue saturation slider, desaturate the blues, and now you get this beautiful ring shot with all the color, but without that blue bouncing off the diamond. 100%, 100%. All right, we're going on to Alexis Rodriguez uh, Montalvo. You know what, you speak Spanish, so why don't you say his name? Uh, Alexis Rodriguez Montalvo, Alex y Dali, Casimientos Fotografía. <laughs> oh, so much better, so much better. Okay, so Alex, this is a great image. Um, really love this. Let's go ahead and uh, think of a number here. Okay. I'm, I'm stuck on this one. Okay. Are you ready? You know, there, there's some things that I really like about it, but only because I find some things that I can kind of critique about it that I'm, you know, I don't know. Well, I'm going to give you the hard job of starting first, but you get it for your number? Yep. Okay. Here we go. Three, two. I gave it an Thanks. eight. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Okay. No, that doesn't good. happen that's often. Good. Okay. Two minutes. Go. Okay, so the the only thing that that really uh, I wish I could go in and fix um, is the guys on the camera left side. Uh, I I the, I just feel like they're coming off darker uh, than everyone else, and so I kind of feel like they get lost in the shadows. Maybe maybe they're not as good of friends as the rest of them are. Um, <laughs> that was just a joke. Uh, but but that right there. The other thing is that ball, uh, the cue ball, sitting over on the left hand side. I just wish it was. Yeah. Either by the rest of the balls or somewhere where it just wasn't right on the edge of the frame over there. Um, so those two things. Now, I congratulate Alex on making sure there was some kind of rim light to help carve out some of those guys. I think that's fantastic. I love his use of light there. And I love the control on those guys without spilling all over the 
the billards table. So, and I love the low angle as well. So lots of really good things. I just wish I could go in there and get those guys on that camera left side uh, a little bit brighter. I agree, it's these guys right here. And the simple fix to that is honestly just to feather the light towards the left side. So really when you add a light source like that, you shouldn't be lighting towards the center. You should actually be firing that light source across and aiming towards the opposite side. It's one of those big kind of simple lighting tricks that we talk about in our lighting courses is feathering to the opposite side of the group. Um, I, I agree 100%, that ball was like the first, I was like, why is there one ball that's like yeah. right there? Um, so the only other things to me was like, there's a couple things and I, I felt like you're doing so much right with this, you know, in terms of getting low to the table and getting the table to kind of lead up into them, the posing of the subjects, um, like the way that they're lit, the way that the background is pulled down, the, the, all these things are things that are beyond what a typical photographer would do. And I kudos to that. So I also would have removed a few other things like this top, right? There's this weird, like little light thing that isn't lit up and it's kind of distracting me. The other thing is watch your shadows. Do you notice the shadows on the arms of the men on the other side? Most likely we're hitting something. There's an object that we're hitting that's causing those shadows and my time is up. So that's it. Yeah, I think what it was hitting, I think it was hitting those light fixtures. Yeah, it could be for sure. So cleaning up those things, I think it's a really great, I think it's great as it is, but it'd make it even better. Hey, I like, I like his logo as well. It was nice. It was small. It was, it's nice. I like it. Well, I just like the design of it. <laughs> oh, okay. There was a, a few Alex logos submitted yeah. that were like huge. And I was like, nope, we can't, we can't use that. Yeah. It is nice. It is nice. All right, this is Alicia Lin of Alicia Lin Photos. Okay. You got a number? E yes. This is hard, man. This is hard for me. Like I said, five, five. If you guys rated any of my images, they would all be like threes and fives Whatever. on a good day. So, so if I'm giving you guys higher numbers than that, then just know that, that you're, you're, I could put your photo on my website and be happy. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to go, I'm ready for this one. You ready? Yep. Ah, oh, tied six. Okay. Two minutes up. Go. Yeah. So, I mean, the biggest thing that comes out to me is the light on that grass in the front. Um, that, I think that could have been taken care of either with a crop, if they want to crop it in, maybe like waist high. Uh, I thought that would have been kind of an interesting look. Uh, or just taking a graduated filter in Lightroom and just drawing some black light up in there. I just, I keep going to that. I can't, I can't even tell if it's grass or gravel or something over in that right-hand side. It almost distracts me from what's happening with a couple. Um, I love the light on the couple. I love how there's lots of light right where they're at. Um, I love the use of smoke. It's not easy to use those smoke bombs. I know you guys have put out some really good information about that, but it's not easy for someone using smoke for the first time. So I, I uh, you know, applaud her for the efforts uh, in doing that. But the only reason I give it a six is because of that bottom right corner. I think you can clean that up and you easily got a really outstanding photograph. Yeah, so I actually cropped it while you were mentioning it. And you're right that we get a, we get a much more um, kind of compelling image by cropping in just so that we see only essentially that smoke and fog. Um, and I have them framed kind of like towards the bottom and leaving that negative space at the top is like a triangle that kind of leads into them. And I think already the image would be like a seven or a, you know, a notch higher from just that. Yeah. Um, the only thing I'm gonna mention as well is I have, I have two reasons why. So one of these is like very subjective. Um, let me start with the objective thing first the highlight behind them is too much. Now, the reason why that's happening is because you're only using one light. So to get one light to fill all the smoke, you have to keep it at a high power setting, but that one light blows out everything behind them. So the key to this is lowering the power settings, and if you need more light on the smoke, then add in a second light, you know, that's just angled toward the smoke, or even a third light coming from the outside to light in, so you don't get that super bright, blown out hot spot directly behind them. The last thing I'm gonna mention, and my timer's gonna go, the last thing I'm gonna mention is just I guess I don't necessarily see the context or purpose of these types of smoke images, particularly for wedding photographs um, like this. Because I, I try to think of it from a storytelling standpoint and where this fits into the day. And you end up with just having like this one engagement photo, this one thing that like, so 
This is really a nitpicky thing, but if I were gonna use smoke bombs for the wedding day, I would almost tell the bride and groom, like, let's make it part of the event, you know? Like, let's yeah. make it something that everybody does together or it's part of the event. So there's more than just that one single image with a smoke bomb. Yeah, no, that, that's good feedback. I, I will say I do love her use of layering those smoke bombs. I see it looks like two smoke that. bombs, one behind and one in front. Yeah. And I love how she layered that. Um, uh, so I, I do enjoy that. The only thing I'm curious, what's going on in the top left part of the of the image? I saw that too. It looks like almost like hair strands or something. It, it like almost looks like it was trying to be edited or fixed or something, but I can't really tell what's going on there. It could be. There, there is something strange going on up there. Yeah, but solid, solid shot. I, I, the, the only other thing with smoke bombs I would too also mention is unless the person's holding it or unless it's somehow part of the image, I usually try to get the actual source of the smoke kind of further out of the image. Mm -hmm. That way you wouldn't, you know, you don't see this like streaming smoke coming out of these little devices. Yeah. Um, but again, solid, solid shot. I agree with some of the things you had mentioned as well. Just some of them though, not very many of them. I hardly ever agree with you. Uh, you know, as long as I got like one thing, then I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Christina Luis has this really lovely shot of the couple in the car. Okay. Take your second on it. All right, do you got a number? Yeah. Okay, three, two. All right, you gave it an eight. Let's hear it, brother, two minutes are up. What did you give it? I didn't actually see what you gave it. I gave it a seven. Seven, okay. Um, so I, I, I I'll mention the things that I love first. Um, I actually, it's funny, when I first saw this shot, I'm like, oh, it's an old classic car. Why didn't they scoot back a little bit? But then I also kind of love how it is cropped in. I love how it's actually close and it kind of, you frame it. So they got the, the this couple uh, subframed as far as composition terms go. But but um, but it, it, you immediately know like, oh, it's a classic car. So I don't, there's something interesting about it. I would have obviously shot one further back as well, which I'm sure uh, Christina probably did. Um, so a couple things, I, I love the lighting on it. I, it looks like it's just one simple flash that was probably sitting in their lap, lighting bouncing off the ceiling, coming back and, wrap, and wrapping around in the front. So it's a very simple lighting setup and I love that. Um, the only things that I think I would change is I, and this might just be Christina's editing style. It just feels a little bit saturated to me. Um, and it could even be my monitor for all that. Um, and the other thing is the, the subframe, when I, when I try to create a subframe, I try to make it exact. And I feel like on the left-hand side, it's not symmetrical with the right-hand side because it just crops off a little bit. And I know this is totally ticky tacky, very, very small. Um, but I would have just opened my frame just a little bit to be able to include the entire window mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit more of that handle that's on the trunk there. Um, love the lighting, everything else. Love the emotion of the couple. But those are my only two things. I like it a lot. I agree with everything there. Um, I was also going to mention like, it looks like they. It looks like there could be. To me, it looks like almost two light sources because it looks like there's a backlight as well. But either way, make sure that they pull the hair behind her chin back and up and over, so you're not lighting up that hair underneath her chin. It kind of looks like it's beard. Um, there's also a little bit of a highlight here behind his neck that I find a little bit distracting. If you just lean them over towards the left side, both of them a little bit, you'll end up with a more symmetrical shot, um, like what Trevor was saying. In addition, like correcting the frame. There's also this line right here that I don't think is adding anything to the image. It's above the handle of the trunk. My time is up. And the last thing I was gonna mention is if I were to do that same thing again and grab my HSL. So I'm just gonna grab um, an HSL tool real quick. I'm gonna show you that for me, the colors are a bit distracting here because I love the, the warmth and the color tones with the greens and everything that we see inside the car. But these magentas are just so dang strong that it almost like kind of pulls me out of the photograph a little bit. So I wouldn't remove those per se, I would just tone them down a little bit so the blues and everything else aren't pulling away from the other colors in the image. I'm gonna dial down their, their skin tone a little bit. So with those adjustments, I think you have something really solid here. I really like it, it's great. Okay, I'm gonna go next. This is from Daniel Fugasio of Daniel Fugasio Photography. Daniel, you're 200 pixels short, but we took it anyway. <laughs> it's a cool image. Okay, you got a you got a number? Uh, I think so. Oh wait, are you counting? Okay, no. you ready? <laughs> All right, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Three, two. 
Okay. See, he's he's set. Okay. All right. You set this up on like how nice of a guy he is, and he's more critical. Than, I'm just kidding. He, he's a super nice. He's the nicest guy now. All right. Two no, minutes. no, no. It, you know what? Again, this is one of those shots. Like you said, it's it's one of those shots as a portfolio, as a professional. You definitely you need to know what you're doing in order to nail the shot. For um, sure. I just feel like if this was a photograph that I was submitting to people to be critiqued, then 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 I would try to clean up some things. And there's a few things in here that I think I would, you know, take note of. So let's hear it. All you right, got your, your two minutes are on, man. Cool. You're wasting so, time. Uh, a couple things. One hey, is, you're, is... you're wasting time. Hey, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, wasting your time, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna reset no, your time. <laughs> So, so the thing that first stands out to me is the blue behind them. I actually, I, I wish it was either really blue or somehow balanced with everything else. It just feels unnatural. It feels like there's a flash there. I wish it had a gel on it or something to kind of balance it with everything else. Um, so that was the first thing that stood out to me. The second thing is on the right-hand side of the frame, the, the, um, the first off that red part, I wish it was just cropped in a little bit. And second off, even those pillars behind them, either open your shutter speed and bring that in a little bit more or kill it. But I feel like it's just kind of sitting back there like it doesn't really fit. It doesn't really stand in the frame very well. Um, the only other thing is I, I don't, I would be experimenting with those lights back there. I don't know, one, the colors look a little strange. I've never seen those colors of lights happen before. It kind of, again, I think it's just the white balance is a little bit off, but um, either I might consider taking them out entirely or if I'm leaving them in, at least make sure that they don't have that weird white balance to them. So those are the only things that stood out. Yeah. I do feel like to add to this, um, my big thing is that most likely this was shot at too high of an ISO and at, like you said, an you know incorrect white balance. So we end up with just tons of green and kind of that, that nasty like street light kind of temperature all over the frame. And then with a blue that doesn't quite blend and match. And so what I would say is, before you actually take the shot, um, white balance over to the building. So if I actually click and white balance to the building, you'll notice just how much more blue that gel gets because you're probably adding a blue to it. And notice that we're at a plus 60 now for our tint. So plus 60 magenta to get that out. But now oh. with that, you probably would notice that you don't need a blue gel there. You could probably just shoot it without the gel and have something that's a little bit more neutral. Um, and I also agree that Compositionally, it feels a little bit boring to me. There's not really anything leading up into the couple except for that curb. We have empty dead space on the right side that doesn't belong. And the lights up top kind of aren't used in a way I would like. Um, last thing, when you're pulling your highlights, just don't pull them so much that the whites turn gray. And here they're turning a little bit gray and it also muddies up the color a bit. You know, I actually think this image would look nice if it was a uh, portrait. Um, uh, What's the aspect? aspect? Yeah, I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna while and, you're talking, and only include the one street light, and then also turn it black and white. I think it would look really solid. It would almost look like that light is what's casting light on them. Um, I agree. Yep, that one light, and then I'll flip it black and white, and I'll remove my little markings on it so you can see. Yeah, I agree. It's it's much much stronger. Great suggestions. That's why they pay you the big bucks, man. <laughs> I wish I got paid. <laughs> okay. Elizabeth Lloyd of Elizabeth Lloyd Photography submitted this next shot. Let's go ahead and take a look. It's almost like we're facing some of the same issues here. You know, so it's interesting because Elizabeth Lloyd happens to be a really good friend of mine, like super oh. sweet friend. And so I had no idea that one of her photos was here. So um, Elizabeth, I love you. And oh, now he's going to destroy you. <laughs> She's actually an extremely talented photographer out of St. Louis. Incredibly talented. That's awesome. Okay. Are you ready with this one? Yeah, let's do it. All right. I'm going to... Oh, this one's tough. Okay. You count it down. Three, two, one, five. Yeah. We matched up. All right, dude. You got two minutes. Go. Okay, so yeah, it is kind of similar to the last one. I feel so the first thing obviously is the cake to me. It doesn't feel like it fits in. I I can't tell if it's um if that's a wedding dress. I mean, because it is if it is, it's a little bit unnatural wedding dress, which is totally fine and I love that. But for some reason it doesn't it it doesn't work uh for a couple reasons. The cake one, it happens to be a little bit darker, but it also is kind of like pulled away from her. So if I were 
bringing that cake in. If this was a wedding dress, I would definitely make it closer to her, make, you know, kind of combine those two. Um, the, also the story is kind of strange to me. So if, again, if it is a wedding and that cake does belong, it's almost like she's looking away, like, like, I don't know if I want to take this cake or not. So, um, and then lastly, the flashes, while I love the knowing that, uh, she used a, you know, high aperture in order to get the little stars and everything else and the, and the colors, it's beautiful. It just, I'm trying to understand the purpose. So again, this goes back to the last one. I would almost portrait, you know, aspect ratio, make it portrait, turn it black and white only have her in that that light there and i think you got a really solid image but including everything on the right hand side just doesn't work for me yeah honestly dude i i mirror every single thing that you said and when i first saw this i thought that cake was actually a fire hydrant um with just the tones of the lights that were coming through i thought she was outside and that we were seeing a fire hydrant i was like why would they shoot with a fire hydrant and then i realized it was a cake afterwards my big issue with this is just story and purpose it's i i, I can't see I don't understand what's happening with it. I don't really know, you know, why we have two lights placed in the scene. I don't know what she's doing. Like you said, you pointed every single thing out. The last thing I would add is the colors just feel so off. We have these really red kind of tones on her skin. We have these kind of weird orange, almost greens in the uh, in the cake and in the dress, and then the blue lights. Um, those things kind of just throw me off a little bit. So the 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 reason that like there's certain things happening here where I would have given this a three or four, but I feel like you are doing certain things like adding in the lights and you're thinking of let's make this interesting and compelling. And it is more interesting and compelling than like, you know, if you just walked into this and took the shot. Um, but I think the story and the purpose might be missing. I'm I might, I might reevaluate and knock it down a little bit in my rating, but we love I'm you, Elizabeth. Interested. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're good. We do this all the time on the phone. <laughs> we do actually. No, I was gonna go back and look um, in the Magmod community where you were uh, asked for submissions. Is that post still there? Uh, it is actually. Uh, the only reason I asked that is because Elizabeth, her style of editing is actually different. So uh, I, I'm actually kind of surprised with the colors and stuff. I was just gonna make sure it was in fact Elizabeth's photo, and just in case it wasn't, we give credit to the person who it was. But I can pull that up later. Why don't you do it right now? While you're on that side, um, oh, I would hate go. to have uh, had the wrong. Hold thing. on, I, I got it pulled up right now. I was able to pull up the thread here. Uh, Daniel, sorry, let me just go through these real quick. Da, da, da. Um, yeah, it is Elizabeth. Okay. We did okay. ask for dramatic images. So that was one thing we were asking for dramatic images in the kind of the premise of the. But I understand that you might like her style might be different. I see what she's doing. Okay, so what she was showing people was, um, and this is actually one of the things I pointed out in the very beginning. She was she was basically this was a lighting workshop where she was showing people how to do what's called I, I like to call it stadium lighting, where I put lights behind the couple, and then I'll and then I'll have like um, you know the little stars and sometimes gel it. And so I think what now that I know that this was a workshop, my guess is they were probably doing portraits, and then she was showing this really cool stadium lighting idea. But again, I think it loses the context or the story of the photograph. And that's why we were both kind of losing that. You know, yeah. the cake was probably part of the workshop on the side. But anyhow, so. so well, if you yeah, imagine is, you're not going to bring like 50 people to a workshop to fill in the background. But if you imagine like all the guests behind those, like where the where, where she's placed and where the cake is, put 50 guests in there with the stadium lights coming in from behind. And now you'd have a really cool lighting setup and a really cool image for sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right, Marcello. Nope, this is like somewhat Spanish, so I'm going to let you read that one again. <laughs> Marcelo Prieto. There you go. Okay. Um, this is nice. I'm a little bit okay. I'll I'll save it for the. I'll save it for there. Um, goodness. You ready? Yeah. Um. I'm gonna give yeah. this a. Oh, I'm stuck between. I'm just gonna give it a five. Okay, I was gonna say six. So uh, here's the thing: I like the the lighting control on the couple again, yeah. and and I like the balance, um, and I like the position of the light. Yeah. I, I, I'm really stuck on why they're being photographed in this really interesting room. Um, That's the exact problem too. Yeah, and and. 
And I, I think if I were photographing in this room, I would maybe try to use some of those those objects and those frames to kind of like subframe them and kind of shoot through that stuff. That way I can show that we're, you know, I, maybe this this is like a factory where they met or something to do with a family business or something like that. And 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 I get that. Um, it just the the stuff around them doesn't, you know, scream wedding photo to me. I can't see them framing this up high on their on their house, for example. Um, that might might be totally wrong though. But that's the only reason I would give it a six. The only other thing that I would just mention is that light on them. Um, some of it's also spilling on the on the right hand side, those little contraptions that are coming out. And so those bars there compared to the bars on the left, you kind of lose that symmetry. So I'd maybe just try to, if I could, either darken that down in Lightroom or uh, just get a little bit better, tighter light control on them. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm the exact same. Like if this scene does have a story and context to them, I would have shot it differently. And you have so many natural frames and subframing objects here. Like like Trevor said, you can get low to these objects. You can also you know, place, um, you, you can shoot basically through these, I don't even know what this is. You can shoot through these frames. There's a lot of things you can do where you can still use the, the what you see here without necessarily, you, you almost make it more implied as opposed to what it is right now. It just feels like very in your face. Um, my other issues with this is I do see like that kind of big shadow directly to the left of him. In addition, mm -hmm. the color toning and choices of light color and post-production and gel and everything doesn't really to me say wedding. It actually says to me the matrix. This is like that very kind of Hollywood green toning that you would see in like a cinematic film like the matrix where everything has that green kind of hue. And you can see that because if I press my white balance tool and simply select her dress, you'll notice we immediately get a temperature correction with tint going up to plus 11 for, for magentas. I would take it up even further and then bring the temperature up and I start getting to a temperature that to me around here feels a little bit more wedding-esque, but I still have issues with everything that Trevor said. Um, context, story, seeing too much of the scene, everything. You know, Pi, I'll, I'll just add, if, if, if this was, if let's say they wanted a photograph with all this stuff in front of them, maybe it's their business or something along those lines. Um, I think they could have made this, Marcelo could have made this really interesting adding some gels. So like if he would have uh, gelled, you know, maybe two gels, one on the left, one on the right with some really interesting colors, uh, hitting those objects to make them yeah. really kind of stand out and also adding some, some, some contrast, some light, some shadows, something to make it really just different. Um, I think that would have helped as well. And then, like you said, that shadow to the left behind him, that could have been fixed if the light would have just moved, moved a little bit closer to the camera. I do, again, I, I, I uh, applaud him on his light control, um, but yeah. The light control is good for sure. Okay. Olamide Onofua of Onofua Photography Studios. Okay. Got a number? Yeah. All right. I'm going to go. Okay. Bye. So, <laughs> so I swear I'm a, I'm a super nice guy. Um, I, I, I'm, I, I was, okay, I'm just going to do it. I, I was going to go four. Um. <laughs> Being a super nice guy has nothing to do with critiquing. In fact, the fact that he is actually spending his time to critique other people's photographs without being paid means you're a super nice guy. Now, okay. with that said, verbally bash away. All right. No, no, no. D definitely no bashes. Here's the thing. The image is beautiful, and the couple's going to like this photograph. Like, they're going to they're gonna love it. Um, immediately, though, if I, if, if I were um, looking at this photograph, the first thing I look at is I just think that the angle is just too low. I just wish that he would have just – or she would have come up just a little bit. Um, because at the angle that they're at, her chin blends right in with her her robe there, and yeah. and it's this beautiful cultural robe, and it just it all kind of blocks together. So I think if they would have just r risen up just a little bit, another foot or two. Um, the other thing is I wouldn't have mind even seeing a little bit more of the wall. Now that wall might have been really small, and they might have been a, a really creative use of the wall. But I think just backing up just a little bit, showing their body, showing them together. Um, could have helped. The other thing I will mention though, is I will say when you have cultural robes like this that are big, sometimes it's really hard to do a silhouette like that unless you have them back up even more and just hold hands in front or something along those lines. Cause otherwise it all kind of blends together in one big robe. Um, you know, so that's the only thing with silhouettes like this, you might consider just adding a little bit of light and that way you can actually see the difference between those two, um, the, the, the garments. 
yeah. I essentially raised it up a, a notch and and was thinking, okay, if it were a five, I'd give it a you know six or a seven because hey, we're thinking about gelling and, and lighting the background, and then I knocked you several pegs back down because of the exact same issue. A silhouette is really meant. I mean, your when you shoot a silhouette, what's interesting about that shot is the action and the forms that are in that shot, and we just don't see any of that. We don't see any of the action. We don't see any of the forms. You do see a little bit of a peck on the forehead, but like you said, with those traditional garments on, it wasn't the right pose for this setup um, for for that. Uh, I also agree if the wall is continues out, like shoot wider, like like get a get a shot that's a little more dynamic, a little more interesting. Pull them apart, put them in action, put them in pose that tells a story for why they're there. Um, that'd be my main thing too. You know, I do love uh, the use, the way he uh, or she shot those gels is fantastic. Because sometimes putting those orange gels, a lot of times what I see is I'll see kind of a white, you know, part first, and then it gets kind of gelled on the side. So I love their use of gels there. Um, and then I love when you said action, the first thing I thought was if he had that guy, you know, holding the girl by the hand or, or you know, holding her hand, walking forward or something with that gel, I don't know, something a little bit different. But but I, I do love the shot. Great use of gels. I just... Yeah few things there okay all right Paco Van Leeuwen Paco Van Leeuwen photography let's do this you got a number I think so okay I do too <laughs> you killed me I gave I it an eight I, I'm just it's just a nice I'm having a good day today I'm having a good day I'm feeling nice you know, and see, and I'm having like gastrointestinal issues, so I'm just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> that explains a lot, actually. Not, I'm not even talking about the fatigue stuff. I'm not. Actually, I'm just going to go back to drinking my Dr. Pepper. Why don't you take this one first? <laughs> but you're the, okay. Um, so honestly, there's, there's tons going right for the image. I like the framing, all the leading lines like that are leading up into them. Um, it's a beautiful balance in the overall... Uh, exposure and everything between the flash and the ambient light. I love that warmth on the ambient light and I love the kind of slightly cooler tones in the flash. You did a great job with that backlight. Honestly, I'm probably bringing this down a little bit because we have this strong highlight um, slightly behind her arm, which is a little bit odd. I find their poses to be just a little bit bleh, like a little bit boring. Um, his chest is kind of sticking out and covering up a lot of her form. Uh, sorry, not his chest, his tummy. So like I would have had him like kind of stand up a little more tall, open out the leg a little bit, um, let us see them holding hands, let him see more of the forms and the figures in the shot. Uh, but other than that, it, it, it's really strong. It's a really great compositional shot. Um, so go, Trevor. What are you seeing? Yeah. So the 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 biggest thing for me was the bright light behind them. I just felt it was a little bit too bright. And again, it. When I say these things, it's not that I don't make these same mistakes myself all the time. It's just when I actually critique this, it's opportunities for me to learn as well. So I just felt like that light was just a little bit bright. And then also I felt like there's this weird, I'm not sure if it's because he used two flashes on either side, but there's like shadows hitting the left and right side yeah. um, of the stairwell. And I, and again, I don't know exactly what it was. And then the very last thing was just, I felt like we were just missing the symmetry just a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's almost there. It looks like it could have been adjusted just a little bit or cropped just a little bit differently and we would have got it. And so, um, again, when I, when I critique these things, if somebody were just to say, Hey, you know what though? It's, um, it's just his body is leaning off the left side a little bit as opposed to, so his shoulder is right against that edge. Whereas hers has that space. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that right side, I could have been just brought in. I, I will, I do want to just mention though, I love the fact that his head is under that stained glass window. That's phenomenal. Great job there. Um, you know, uh, oh, and you mentioned the pose. The thing about the pose is I just, his hand in his pocket, if mm -hmm. you can try to get that, you know, that action, that connection, if you can put it on her hip or something along those lines, uh, granted her hip is kind of open there, but, um, it, it, it's a solid shot. It really is a solid shot. And it would certainly be something I would put on my website, but you know, yeah, yeah, just a few things. My main thing is in that pose too, um, but I agree with uh, like one of the things that you said. <laughs> with one of the things, <laughs> you know, it, it, I don't know if I, I, again when I was talking about the uh, symmetry, I, it could literally just be cropped in just a tiny bit from the right, and you're going to match yeah. those those uh, those stairwells. So again, it's nitpicky stuff, but it just helps your the subconscious, your mind sees that, and immediately you you know. You, you right. either see that it works or you see that it doesn't, but um, so. There's a tiny bit there. Okay, so Tiffany Ryland, 
uh, Ackerman of Tiffany and Ryland Photography. Let's go ahead and do this last image here. This is a really fun shot. Um, all right, you ready to put up a number? I am. Okay. Ready? Yep. Whoa, did you give it a nine? I can give it a nine. Oh my goodness. Okay. And, and I, I, well, you know what? I'm gonna let you go first because there's something about this photograph that I don't know if you know about. How about that? Okay. Like actually, why don't I why don't I explain it? Because I do know I I've seen a behind the scenes on this. I actually did it how I shot it with them, and they told me about this photograph. And uh, and so there's something maybe if I explain it, then it might help even your rating go up. How about that? Okay. So, so oh, go ahead. Well, there's one thing that I want everybody to do when you look at a shot like this, and when you're critiquing a shot, it's to not go, oh, it's just another backlight, you know rain or snow shot because that kind of bugs me because it like obviously we're all going to be doing a lot of the same techniques what is important is to me in one of these shots is what is going to be a client's reaction to this or a potential client's reaction when they see this in your portfolio and at that i think they're going to love it i think it's a fantastic image um so I, now i want to hear what your explanation is yeah so the reason i i this image really stands out for me especially knowing how it was created um, what they did with this image was it was it was cold, uh, obviously, in the snow in Arizona, which is kind of unique. Um, but this image was shot about four o'clock in the afternoon. It was far prior than when the sun had set. And so when I think about the execution of this photograph, about darkening it down and making it look as if it was nighttime, um, using a blue gel behind them to, again, emphasize this this, you know, after sunset type of type of look um, and then being able to capture that snow and everything and lighting them in the front, all of that really like I love. The only reason it's not a 10 image to me is it just feels like they're just a little bit off, um, which could have been an artistic choice for them. But I just felt like I almost would have preferred them either more to the left or more centered. I'm not really sure which one, but I just felt like it was a little bit off there. And I and I, I would love to see their skin tones just a tiny bit warmer, um, just a little bit warmer. But but again, I'm I'm I love this image, especially knowing that it was created during daylight hours. Yeah, I'm warming it just a tiny bit too, because I agree 100% um, that a slight bit warmer would be really nice where we have it right here versus that little bit cooler. Um, I think it's a stellar image. The fact that they did this, you know, midday and it's, well, that it's snowing in Arizona and that they pulled it off and all these things, <laughs> I would raise it to like probably an eight. My, my main thing here that I think, and again, this is a fantastic image, but there's two things here that I think would be incredible. One is to see a little bit more context in the scene. Like if I were to, if I were to, this would be that image that I would use next to the wide shot. You'd have that wider shot, you know, that kind of like captures the entire scene. You have maybe like some framing objects and things that are kind of captured in there in the foreground and layering. And then you put this shot next to it as a square close up to kind of like round out the album, right? Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's the way I see this is like, it's that supplemental album shot. And as such, I would crop it as like a square so that you have them directly in the center. Um, and you have your, your close up. What I'm missing here is that I just feel like there's so much room here to, to have had that breathtaking wide. And I would have loved to have seen that, but the light balance is fantastic. That's a plus one, the gelling in the front and behind and getting it like that close in, in, and getting your ambient light, that's another plus one. The pose is a plus one. You cropped it at their thighs, that's another plus. I mean, you've got a lot of things going for this image um, that make it stellar. I do agree that like the crop doesn't quite make sense because we're not, it's not quite centered up, but it's not quite anything else either um, in that original composition. So I do this all the time where you take one of these shots and you're like, oh my goodness, I love this so much that you almost forget about everything else and yeah. you get caught up in the moment. And it's in those moments where it's like, I always tell our, our, our team, slow yourself down. And even though it's perfect, and even though, you, you know, just walk around for a second and look at the scene with fresh eyes, put the camera down and see what else exists there. Because I think there were other opportunities too. Yeah, no, I think you're right there. You know, one other thing that I think is worth noting as well, and not just necessarily about this image, but about any image, is when you're using lights, when you're using off-camera flash and you're putting light behind them and in front of them, 
Um, don't be afraid of just every once in a while clicking. Uh, you know, SR Lounge has some great presets. Click one of their black and white presets and just look at it just to learn. Because when you when you make something black and white, then immediately you're able to see the light and and you're able to see does this image work in color as well as black and white. And like for me, this photo would work in both color and black and white. Um, you know, but again, I, I think it's just one of those things. I actually. When I'm focusing on lighting out on a shoe, I actually will go and change my JPEG settings, my stand, my uh, camera settings, so that's shooting in monochrome, um, knowing that the raw is going to give me the color, but just so that I can focus on the light and where the light's falling and hitting. Um, so just something, yeah. a little tip. Not nothing about that. I wouldn't. It doesn't have anything to do with that photo, but I just something I want to mention. No, I, I I actually black and whited it and changed the crop a little bit while you're talking. I think it looks fantastic as a black and white. Yeah, I mean, I love the color version of this. I just mean it's a little tip for people to, you know, be able to see the light. For sure, it looks good. This is a shot that really goes well both ways, either way. So thank you for joining us for this episode of Constructed Critique. Yeah, absolutely, it was a pleasure. Be sure to follow Trevor Daly on Instagram. We're gonna throw up his handle as well as in the MagMod community. I believe it's hashtag MagMod community on Facebook, right? It is, yeah, come join us. All right, guys, and we will see you in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for letting us be part of your creative journey. See you guys next time.